Please don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to flat bush B. Now they got heat on their feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the streets, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me, then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh, that's less me. SAT from preaching, can't test me. Atheists are now believing, that bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all chasing. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing Any of the relationships that y'all changing We rearranging, making the shame shift Giving Satan back what's his, that's the blame shift Rise up and walk commands, that's the lame shift Cheat codes for living this life, that's the game shift All on Yeshua man, the rest is manure man I'm dying daily so I rise up a purer man Press and be daily so my sins looking fewer man Washing the blood so my sins down the sewer man yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be uh, Yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen I am your host, Tim Ross I hope you're all doing well Hope you had an amazing weekend Hope you slept good last night Uh-huh Hope your eyes popped open this morning, like just ready for the week. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Um, hope you got to go to church this weekend, either in person or online. And I hope what you heard, like confirmed something for you, corrected something in you, challenged something uh, that you're going through or um, gave you some peace, something. Um, hope you got to hug somebody's neck that you love or that loves you. And, um, yeah, I'm just glad to be here. Like, it's Monday. Some people hate Mondays. I don't hate Mondays, man. No, I sir. love Mondays. Mondays are like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. So uh, I want to shout out to uh, all those that have downloaded the B-Side app. Thank you so much for rocking with us. Thank you for literally pressing B. Um, I think we sit at like 16,000, 17,000 downloads at this point. And um, I, I cannot stress enough how much I thank you so much for uh, believing in this vision, being an early adopter of this technology, of this platform. Um, a year from now, two years from now, um, I really do believe people are going to be like, what? They did what? And I think we're the ones right now that are going to be able to say, yeah, we was we was the first ones to press B. We glad you finally caught on. Salute. Like, yeah, yeah, B-Side has 100,000 downloads. Come on, let's just speak prophetically. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? B-Side got 100,000 downloads. Uh, B-Side got 250,000 downloads. We got over 100,000 subscribers. We got half a million subscribers. We got, we got 368,000 active daily users. Like, before all those numbers, all those stats pop off, we was rocking with it first. Amen. Just a month out from when we actually pressed B, had the... Uh, B-Side launch event. Um, shout out to those thousand people that came in from across the country. Some came from other countries uh, to be with us in Irving, Texas and to make that work. And so um, I just appreciate you. Appreciate you rocking with us. And to all of y'all that have been so generous and so kind to us, not once, but but twice, but thrice, but quadruple, All y'all have just been generous through Cash App, through PayPal, Y'all are y'all are blessed people, and in turn, you're being a blessing, which allows us to be a blessing. So, um, thank you, thank you. I love you guys. And um, what y'all doing? Where y'all at? Holla at me. Roll call. Where y'all? Where, 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 what y'all doing today? Where y'all? Where y'all at? Holla at me. Coming through. I know y'all somewhere. I know y'all doing something. Somewhere. Let's go, Boston. Prosper, Texas. Y'all just hey, Batova, just come through. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> House already deep. Philippines, let's go in purpose. Tampa, Switzerland? See, that it starts jumping. See, y'all take this roll call seriously, and then I can't keep up with all this. I literally can't keep up with all this. San Diego, Waco, I'm going to just let my eyes fall wherever they fall. Fresno, um, yeesh. Lexington, <laughs> Baltimore, New Orleans, Reed Spring, Missouri, South Central LA. Let's go. Let's go, L.A. Uh-huh. I was in uh, 
I was in um, Jersey yesterday, and somebody asked me if I was a Cowboys fan. And I was like, nah, man, L.A. everything, except for the Raiders. They're now in Vegas, but that's still my team. Um, but I'm Kings. I'm, I'm uh, Lakers, obviously. I'm Dodgers. Yo, they just gave Otani $700 million dollars to play baseball for the next 10 years. Can we have some? Bruh. Public service announcement to everybody playing football, basketball right now. Stop. Amen. Go get you a a, a wood bat, huh, or an aluminum bat, (laughs) and go straight to uh, one of these, I don't know, the place with the go-karts, but they also had the batting cages. Celebration station. Is that a thing? I think so. Main event. Did you just make that up? No, no. Celebration Station's real. Okay, cool, cool. I never know when you're just making stuff up at the top of your head. Please forgive me. It's not, no, it's just it, I don't know. It was the Hood Kids in Mesquite. There was a little cheap thing, but Celebration Station. Celebration Station. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, go there right now, get in a batting cage, <laughs> and if you can hit a nine, nine, I guess like what a ninety-seven mile per hour curveball, bruh, play baseball. Now I'm not gonna say you're gonna get seven hundred mil. What I will say is that you could play till you're like 47 years old. Do you know Pete, there's people in the Hall of Fame that only hit that ball like 22% of the time? 22%, man. Not 54. Not 82. Not 37. 22%. Anyway, shout out to Otani, man. $700 million for 10 years. Praise God. Just, just for a perspective, LeBron has made about 428. Four, 428 million in the career. In his in the last two decades. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tiny freaking almost doubled this dude's salary over the next decade. Oh Lord have mercy on my soul. Praise him. All right, so um, yeah, man, this dude is seven hundred million. Dollars, yeah, man, yeah. Somebody should have spent more time at the batting cage. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. And again, I don't, I don't, I don't think everybody, everybody gonna get seven hundred million. But man, if you can get on that field, and you don't have to be like six two, you know what I mean? Like baseball is the great equalizer, man. You just stand around, wait for a little ball to roll your way. Amen. Fly, go get it. I mean, come right. on, man. Crazy. Listen. Deion Sanders probably still be playing if 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 he would have chose uh baseball over football. Anyway, I could keep going. Uh uh Tim, who that over there next to Juliana? That's my boy Robert Purvey. Looking like Black Santa. <laughs> <laughs> uh before Santa Claus uh packs up his bags and starts to give everybody their that's been good. Amen. Their blessings for the year. He stops by to hang with me and just uh No, nah, but Robert Purvey, uh this original this is an original dweller. He's been in the basement since the Lord gave me the revelation. I got the, I got the revelation and then I guess we we went f- for lunch somewhere. And 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 then I told you what the whole thing was. So, uh it's funny, uh people like Rob been uh you know, in the last year and a half that I've been doing this you know, obviously, people that never heard of me before are like, oh, my God. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Pastor Larry's back. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understand or that I, that I can, can't really digest a guy. I, I don't know. Like, trying to figure out, like, if he's, don't know if he's saved or lukewarm or he just seems to be straddling the fence a little bit in his speech and his mouth is kind of spicy and. Rob sending me text messages like, bro, you've been saying this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I have, I have, I have been saying this and I have been talking like this since my late, since forever. How about that? Uh, so anyway, um, uh, but anyway, shout out to all of y'all. I probably missed, uh, <laughs> uh, Anita, <laughs> Anita said that impression voice. She is over it. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to all 700 people that are all uh, currently inside uh, the uh, 
1.5 million. Come on, J Optics with the uh, math. 1.5 million a week. Praise God. Some people would pray to win the that in the lottery. Do you think he tithes? If he did, that church it's is thriving. That, ch- that church better. That church better bless the whole community, or just quit. <laughs> hey, do you know? Do you know? Really, really wealthy people will endow a university in perpetuity, mm. but won't give their full tithe to a church. And you know the 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 number one response I hear in reasoning is the church wouldn't know what to do with my full tithe. So they trust a college university. They trust a medical facility, Mm. but they don't trust the church with their full tithe. So imagine a billionaire saying, I'm going to tithe off my annual earnings to one church. No, they split it up because what they're saying is, I don't believe the vision of my pastor is big enough to be able to handle my full tithe. Well, that's not true of every church. As a matter of fact, Uh what a great segue. I wasn't even trying to plan this. I was in New Jersey this weekend. Jersey. We was in Jersey this weekend. We had the incredible honor of uh, doing a pod with Chris Broussard who is um, uh, one of the uh, personalities on FS1's First Things First. And um, I'm, I'm so excited for y'all to see that pod. It will, layer at, it will, it will air at a later date. Uh, but we're church, we're, we're church kids. And so we, we had to be in church on Sunday morning. I didn't have to speak nowhere. We, we wasn't leaving Jersey until the evening. And so uh, we went to Christ Church uh, in Rockaway, New Jersey. And, uh, Dr. David Ireland, uh, planted that church in 1986, 37 years. This man has been pastoring that church, has grown it to multiple campuses. It's doing phenomenal work, um, in the kingdom. If there's any, you know, God called some to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And, Man, this dude might be batting three out of five. Apostle, pastor, teacher, just unbelievable. Uh, but we were there just visiting for the weekend. Great service, by the way. Oh, my God, the confirmations that we had. Hector and I just kept looking at Joe through his whole message because we were like, bro, are you serious right now? Like, he's, like, talking, like, directly to me through this message, and I'm sitting there trying to contain myself, and I'm a loud dude anyway. <laughs> And so this is the 9 a.m. service. 9 a.m. is, like, more reserved. And I'm over there, like, trying to, like, like I don't want to just stand up and be like, preach! And they'd be like, this stranger is in here causing <laughs> us a lot of concern. Uh, but, no, it was just a great teaching. Uh, and um, I took a lot of notes, which I usually don't take a lot of notes no more. I, I can hear things and, and see things, and they just really, really stick. But I had to take notes on this message. Uh, but but he has a – I had to get it. I had to get his little brochure, and uh, I'm praying over something. But I wanted I wanted us to be a part of something because um, I, I do believe that the local church is the hope of the world. Like, like please don't get it twisted that just because – I left being a lead pastor of a church that I'm somehow disenfranchised with the church or <laughs> I want to deconstruct my faith and all that kind of stuff. I didn't, I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. I know a lot of y'all have had to deconstruct your faith. Um, let, me, let me tell you what you're really deconstructing. Let me highlight the deconstructionist real quick. Whoa. You're actually not, you're not deconstructing God. You're, you're deconstructing what you were taught about God. God cannot be deconstructed. Your finite mind versus his infinite mind. You're, you're never going to. He is omniscient. He is all science, fam. He's the creator of all things, right? He is in all things. He is through all things. So so, so I, what you're deconstructing is what you've been taught. Thankfully, I want to shout out to Charles and Maxine Ross, my parents, the Pentecostal Huxtables. Um, uh, uh, I want to shout out Charles and Maxine Ross because... Uh, they left me with a foundation that I didn't have to deconstruct. So I haven't had to go through what some people have had to go through in, in church and in ministry because um, they they put me on a firm foundation. They put me on Jesus. Mm. 
on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. So, so my foundation was never in a denomination. My foundation was never in a pastor. My foundation was never in a bishop. My foundation was never in a movement or organization. My, my hope and my trust is on Jesus. Like that, that is, he is my firm foundation. Everything else can fade away. Heaven and earth are going to fade away, but the, but, but, but the word, the grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of the Lord shall last forever. Like, yo, the, the word's going to be here. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't have to deconstruct anything. So as much as we talk about all these janky churches from the Chitlin Circuit and these niggas out here sleeping on their wives and hoeing around and Whoa. sleeping with dudes and sleeping with girls and molesting kids and stealing money and 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 having a whole congregation buy their book in a week and then talk about they the best seller only at their church um mercedes benz got a mercedes benz uh be because y'all take up pastoral offerings every weekend uh on top of the tithe and the offering y'all <laughs> y'all do seven offerings a weekend and swear they sow in seeds how many seeds can they sow where the harvest at you the only one getting a harvest. Stop playing. So um, every church ain't like that, though. Every church ain't like this, though. So um, um, uh, Christ Church in N the New Jersey area uh -huh. and the surrounding areas, they got campuses in Rockaway, Clifton, Montclair, and online. And uh, he put together this uh, brochure called The Next Chapter. And what I just talked about with uh uh, pastors that don't have enough vision for for uh, multimillionaires and stuff to give their money, psych, this dude got vision because he, he needs $30 million right now, and they're raising $30 million because uh, 37 years passed from the church, he is like, he is, he is putting in place the legacy plan, something that's going to outlast him, and it includes this care center, and, and it is going to uh, cover community services, health and well-being services, family support services. Bro, on the community service side alone, medical, dental, and eye, and eye referral services, mm. capacity builders for small businesses and nonprofits, career pathways, financial literacy training, and a legal clinic. If that was by itself, that would be already crazy, right? But then, did, did this battery just fall out of something? It, we're good. It was a spare battery. Okay, okay. <laughs> about to say like the camera gonna go off in two seconds uh health and well-being services food pantry clothing thrift shop the counseling center vehicle assistance center for uh reconciliation reconciliation bro that's good family support services support groups and the fatherhood initiative multi-sensory rooms youth in transition that are aging out of foster care Step It Up, Blended Family Ministries, English as a Second Language, because y'all know, Estoy Aprendiendo Espanol. Uh -huh, so, so when people are coming over here to learn English as a Second Language, so good. they are on the struggle bus right. trying to learn English in the same way I'm on the struggle bus uh, trying to learn uh, uh, Spanish. I, I told Juliana this morning that um, uh, enojado, mm -hmm. see? Enojado, um, uh, porque um, uh, aprender, uh, 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 aprendiendo, learning. Estoy aprendiendo. No, I just, I just want to say like learning Spanish. Aprendiendo español. Sí, aprendiendo español es muy difícil. Mm -hmm. Difícil, right? Difícil, sí. Uh -huh. sí, so, um, uh, entonces, I uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, necesito mucho más conversaciones. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, 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 como se dice, uh, watching, uh, veo, yeah. uh -huh. sí, sí, veo, um, 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 noticias uh -huh. y, um, telenovelas, uh -huh. más o menos, um, um, <laughs> y, uh, 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 como se dice, canales de juego, canales de juegos, canales, 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 canales de de juegos. De juegos. De, uh, juegos. Juegos. Mm -hmm. Canales de juegos. Uh, the game shows. Mm -hmm. Sí. Y. Uh, necesito mucho. I need a lot. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but look, I'm doing this as like a labor of love. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because I just, I love the Spanish language. I love Spanish, Spanish speaking people. But these people come to this country. It's a necessity. Right. If they don't learn the language, they're, they're not going to be able to progress they in this pro country. I, I don't have that same impetus. I don't have that. I'm not put in those type of situations. So when you when you find a when you find a church, uh, they're they're also going to be starting a um, uh, a Spanish speaking church, which yes they are. Um, um, uh, which a lot of a lot of um, a lot of English speaking churches uh, start Spanish services, but they suck. Fact. Am I lying? The, 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 let, let, let me talk to my English speaking. Let me sp talk to my English speaking churches real quick. When you start a Spanish service, y y y what you want, y you're saying that we want to reach these people, but then you want them to assimilate. Mm. If you want them to assimilate, just force them niggas to learn English. If that's what you're trying to do. <laughs> but if you say you're going to start a Spanish speaking service, don't try to make the Spanish speaking service English. You talking about the in-ear things that they do? No, no, no. I don't. I don't have a problem with translation. That's oh, okay, that's okay, all okay. good. I'm talking about when you when you do a service. Understood. The service is usually in in, in the doggone like where the youth ministry the is, or, or it's in the gymnasium, <laughs> and 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 it starts at like three o'clock. You wouldn't come to church at three. So if you're gonna set up a Spanish speaking service, set it up right. Amen. Amen. Gloria a Dios. Like set it up right. Like. Like, like, make sure that whoever the Spanish pastor is is bomb. Even if he if he's better than you, uh huh. Like, if, give an extravagant gift to the Spanish community if you're gonna do something, but don't give them like secondhand. They came across the border getting secondhand stuff. If you got if you got first generation, second generation Spanish speaking people that are in this country. And they've been successful in 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 assimilating to an English speaking country, but then they want to speak their indigenous language, their native tongue, with their family and friends, and they love that expression of worship. And even though they they're fluent in English, there's just something about the native tongue that they just want to connect to in worship, in word and experience. Bro, give it to them. Amen. Put the money on the table. You wanted it. In the same way you do for that dog on coffee. In the same way y'all do for them bagels. Oh. In the same way y'all did for that children's ministry. Y'all open a checkbook for that. Y'all got dog on softball fields in the back. Y'all got freaking aquatics. <laughs> y'all got, y'all got, y'all got, I haven't said the word aquatics in a long time. Y'all got uh basketball courts and gyms. And then you get to the you get to the Spanish speaking thing, and you think Whoa. you think you being nice because you let them use the main sanctuary at three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> what the hell, bro? What are y'all doing? And you got them cleaning the church. Sorry. But but that's that's the entitlement of that's the entitlement of being English. And don't think I'm just talking to white people, because black people be trying to reach the Spanish community too, and y'all be doing the same thing. I'm just letting it breathe real quick. I'm gonna just let that, just let that marinate real quick. So, anyway, that's that. Um. Uh. So anyway, uh, do we have all the links and stuff? It's it's on right now. Okay, great. And hey, here's what I want everybody to do. This dude's trying to raise. Okay, let me let me see where the breakdown is. Dr. David Ireland, and uh, Christ Church. Um, are, are are believing God for thirty million dollars? Now listen, I'm only believing God for five million. <laughs> I'm I'm believing God for five million dollars going into next year for the B side. Uh huh. And we're meeting with investors and praying. But here's what I know. I know the best way to 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 believe God for what for 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 what I need is to also believe God for what somebody else needs and to help them meet their goal. Cause God got me. Like, I'm good. Like, that $5 million, God, God's going to make a way. I'm doing all I can. He's going to do what he wills. But instead of, like, I'm not going to be sitting up here begging every week, like, can, can we please get some investment? Right. Da, 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 da. No. I just happen to be at a church in New Jersey that, it, that has a big vision to do big things 
for the the local church and the and, and the community and, and really the region. And to that end, they're 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 looking to uh for the the funding sources to come in fifteen million through grants, uh ten million through major donations in the congregation, and then five million by a lender, which is which which I love. They're keeping uh what they're trying to borrow from a traditional lender uh under twenty percent awesome. of the total funding. So so I'm I'm just believing God for them to get the thirty million. And I'm asking every dweller that can yeah. to give ten bucks. Minimum. Tim. Just give ten bucks. Just just give ten bucks. If everybody gives ten bucks, or minimum, y'all. That's all I'm trying to say. Put ten in. No, I'm about, I'm about to up it. Because there's they, they they got these little tiers that I think are actually really dope. Okay, I'm asking everybody to give at least twenty. <laughs> you got to put a dub on it. Put a dub on it, please. This is what we do. You just spammed the, uh, <laughs> just spammed it with all of the. Uh, 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 is the that the, that's is, the giving link? That's the giving link. Sweet. Oh wait, I just sent them the basement link. Let me redo it. Okay. <laughs> I know they're like you. Just so you want us to. You just, want us to rewatch it? You just want us to watch the basement right now. <laughs> ChristChurchUSA.org giving. Yeah, man, just go in there, drop a dub. Tim, would you say what uh, Doctor David is doing is with this initiative is one of the most basement things ever to do Bruh. because he's not saying, Hey, help me just start another church. It's not, nah, Hey, so into us literally giving back to New Jersey. Yep. And that's going to lead them yep. to beautiful conversations about God. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Christ church in Espanol. This, this, I mean, look, it's right there. I mean, they're not playing no games. Prioritizing it. They're prioritizing it. Right. That's how, that's the only way you can do it right is you have to prioritize it. If it's if 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 it sucks, it's because it, it's second. It's a second thought for you. Whoa. It's second tier for you. you. That's why you won't do it well. But you wouldn't even go to that service. <laughs> at three <laughs> at three o'clock. <laughs> After lunch, all half asleep. Yeah, man. After Nobody, you ate chilies. Yeah, what are we doing? Anyway, I'm so excited. Give y'all give twenty bucks to them. Uh, Ali Ali D said New Jersey needs all the ha- help because New Jersey is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I left? Oh my goodness! I and, feel you, sis. And, and and Juliana is is from there. Yep. Right. And it's, that's why I left, sis. So I feel you. So so here's the thing, though, right? <laughs> What if something like this care center gets people to stay? Oh. Because they've actually been blessed yeah. and they've been empowered and they've been mobilized and they've been strengthened and they've been encouraged in the whole nine. Listen, I don't even go to this church, man. <laughs> I visited it one time. It's my only time being there. But listen, man, when you hear when you hear big vision, get behind it. Mm-hmm. You ain't gotta do you ain't gotta do everything. Just do something. We can edit this part out, but because you asked the dwellers to give twenty, I know you won't say it, but you gave a thousand yesterday. Well, I mean, you know, you're leading the charge. You weren't gonna say it. Well, we I, can edit this out. We can get fired. Whatever you want to do. No, nah, I, I just, I just, I mean, you just put me on blast, but I'm, I'm good, <laughs> and I'm just playing. Like, no, nah, dude. I mean, this is, this is what we do. It's not a, it's not a. When, when you find something that that's that's a blessing, be a blessing. So anyway. Uh, that's that. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? If you have not got the book yet, we got, we got the, um, um, shout out to Nelson. Um, we got the advanced reading copy of, uh, welcome to the basement. If you have not pre-ordered, uh, your copy yet, what are you doing? (laughs) What are you even doing? I'm so excited about it though. Like this is like the full, it's the full book. Right. So um, we got this advanced copy, which I'm super excited about. Um, if you've already pre-ordered, I can't wait till you get it. If you if you're an audiophile and you like listening, um, I need you to pre-order the book. I d- hey, I can't believe I did this. The engineer and the director were like, who are you? Well, I went into <clears throat> I went into the studio last week to record the audio book. It was supposed to be done in two sessions. You know, maybe first half of the book on the first day or as much as you can get through, come back the second day, get through it all. I was 30 minutes late because of something I had to deal with at home, and I finished the book. 
And the the engineer said, bro, you must have like the strongest core and the strongest vocal cords wow. because your energy level did not drop in eight hours. W. And I was like, Oh, you had a full work day. This is what, bro, I had to read the whole book. <laughs> right? It's over 200 pages. How, how, what did tell, what did, what did Nelson get out of me on this book? Like, y'all got a lot of 229 pages. Did you fast the whole time or did you eat? Hey, this is one of my favorite pages in the book about the author. I don't have time. Listen, which only thing y'all need to know is I'm a disciple of Jesus. That's one of my favorite things. That's so tiny. My, look at that. That's so tiny. That's so cute. About the author. But that's what I wanted, though. I don't. He did this and he did that and he did the other and then he did another thing. Then he did another thing. Then he did another thing. And um, I watched uh, a documentary on Amazon Prime last night. Bye bye, Barry. It's a uh, documentary about Barry Sanders. And uh, I resonated with that doc so much. The dude just wanted to play football. He wasn't into personal stats. And when he, he no longer had a desire to play the game, he just dipped. Mm. He didn't need to pass Walter. He didn't need to cushion so Emmett couldn't pass him. He was just like, yeah, I'm done. I'm good. And chunk deuces. Well, like it was, it, 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 he a G. He a G. So anyway, I did the book in a day, um, and I read it. Nobody else could read this book but me. Like, who else was going to read this book? Um, thank you, Deontay Chavez. Deontay Chavez. Who your mom and your daddy to be a Deontay Chavez? <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. They pre-ordered. Um, uh, uh, go back up real quick. Who is this? Angel. Angel. Tim read it in one day, so I have no excuse to take a year to read it. <laughs> ditto, ditto. Angel, that's hilarious to me. Uh, go back up. Somebody just said something about the shoes. I'm late to the party. Go back down. Uh, did they do the shoes already? I'm a size seven and have a, a B-side annual description. Alejandra. Oh, Alejandra. Are these sevens? All right, I'm making an executive decision. Hey, Amen. Alejandra. I don't know. There's just something about you saying that that just got me. The little emojis, too. Oh, them emojis got me, too. <laughs> Girl, oh, you on my heartstrings. Alejandra, oh, you are not late to the party. We did not do the shoes already. You are a size seven, and I'm holding yours right here. These are for you, girl. I got you. Five bucks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bro, she already has an annual B side. You trying to extort the the bot the, 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 the dwellers now? That's I'll hilarious. I'll turn my mic off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> These are yours, homie. I got you. Dios te bendiga. See? Okay, so now we just gotta make sure she gets yeah. us her information. Can you DM us, please? Please DM us, Alejandra, so we can get you your shoes. And then and then the and then our other pair for the guys is a ten. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we huh? Discord chat. Discord chat in the we, B side shoes. B side shoes. Discord chat. Um, size ten for the fellas. Um, if 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 that's you, holla back. We got you though. We got you though. These let me tell you something. These are heat. Crispy. That yellow pop. Ooh. <laughs> I'm happy for her. Super happy for her. So, okay, so the book, yep, y'all get that. That's great. And then um here's what I here's so here's one of the things I could not wait to talk about. So what had happened was Edward Schaefer, just hold on. We got size 15s uh coming. They just not today. Um all right, so let's talk let's talk about um Disney real quick. Uh, back in season one, let's go way, way, way back. All the way back in season one, did you say it was episode two? It was episode two. Episode two. Um, I talked about the fact that uh, I unsubscribed to Disney Plus. 
right? Because Disney was doing too much, right? They was they was they 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 got really overt um, with the alphabet community, as I will affectionately call them here, so that uh, YouTube won't just come jump on our necks on these lives. This is why we got the B side, so we ain't got to worry about YouTube's algorithm, but. The alphabet community, whom I love, who I have family members, blood of my blood, that are in the community, whom I love. They were, oh, oh you actually pulled it up. Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, we, we, we talked about abortion, Disney, and a whole bunch of stuff. And that was October 18th of 2023. Wow. Um, no, no, this was just an upload. Oh, this was an upload. Yeah, this this must have been this must have been the second week of July in 2022. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Just B side uploads. Okay, got you. Oh, got you. Okay, I understand what you're saying now. So anyway, um you can go to the B side app if you want to see that whole thing in its uh entirety. But anyway, uh in that episode I talked about the fact that I was not going to be paying for a Disney uh plus subscription anymore because they they were constantly um, throwing something in my family's face that we don't value. We simply don't value it, right? A lot, of, millions upon millions of people value it. We don't value it. And so, uh, and I said, I know this is not going to make a dent in them, and I know it's not going to change anything for their bottom line, but I'm I'm not going to be a part of it anymore. Well, lo and behold, I wound up watching a, a pod. Um, I wound up watching a pod last week that talked about the fact that Disney lost like 1.95 billion like in shares or stocks or whatever and uh the gentleman that was speaking was talking about the fact that Disney forgot that kids are not the ones that buy these subscriptions it's their parents so Disney squared up with the parents while doubling down their support for the alphabet community. And parents, and I know all these ain't Christians, can't be. Parents said, bye. They just left. And here's what I want you to understand. Money talks. Right. And you know, you, you know when money talks the loudest? When money walks. Let me remind you that the Alabama bus boycotts that took place in Selma and other surrounding areas back in Alabama, when black people boycotted those buses, do you know how long they boycotted for? 13 months. Hear me. Not 13 hours. Not 13 days. 13 months, not 13 weeks, right. 13 months, fam. These people said, we're not getting on your bus. So black people jump and, 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 hey, Tim, how do you know this? This is before your time. Because my mama was in Birmingham. Boom. My mama was in Birmingham, and she told me. Mm. People, people think the civil rights movement was like eons ago. Right. My mama was in the in the civil rights movement. Okay? Not my grandmama. Not my great grandmama. My mother, the one woman that pushed me out, drank from a colored water fountain. So just so y'all don't be thinking that that's a long time ago. Have you gotten over it yet? My mama drank from a colored water fountain. My daddy had to go to the back of the hamburger stand to get a hamburger in Dallas. So before y'all start thinking this is a long time ago, it ain't a long time ago. Just because they keep showing you that Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech in black and white, don't mean it was that long ago. They put it in black and white to, to try to make it seem like it's a long time ago. Nigga, that was last week for my parents. Stop playing. The 60s? My parents were in their 20s, fam. What are you talking about? My mom was born in... I can't tell me. My mom was born in the 40s. I won't say the exact year. My mom was born in the 40s, okay? So she was in her 20s when this is going on. And she's a, she's a young adult. So she told me about this. She said black people for 13 months, the solidarity in the black community 
everybody was driving everybody to work. People that had a car, they were getting seven, they were piling in seven, eight people deep in a car going to work. Nine people deep in a car, people sitting on each other's laps just so they won't get on the bus. And uh, the I don't know what the uh, monetary equivalent would be today, but that bus company lost over a million dollars, and that's why they let black, black people back on that bus. Because the only thing louder than money talking is money walking. So now Disney's scrambling to try to figure out what to do because they realize they placed their bet on the wrong community. I'ma let it marinate. I'ma let it marinate. So, um, that's the that that is. We have power. And I mean that as believers in Jesus Christ, we have power. We spend money. And we can choose when and where to give our dollar. I would love to see Secret Wars. I have boxes and boxes of comic books. My dad was an avid comic book collector. I am a nerd. I've seen all the Marvel movies up until... Eternals. And the fact that they tried to slap me in the face with what they wanted to portray in relationships in the, in the movie Eternals, which all overall was a trash movie anyway, but then to make it that loud and proud, that's the way I'll say it since we're on a live. Um, uh, See, I'm at I'm I'm so much more at liberty to talk on B side. This, thank Jesus, thank you for B side. Thank you, Lord. Give give us what we need, so we don't have to keep. I don't like talking in code. I, I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't code switch no more. The fact that I haven't talked in code right now just makes me angry. But where you place your money is that a part of taking dominion? Absolutely, it is. Absolutely, live. That's that's why I want everybody to give uh, Dr. David Island's church twenty dollars. Because every dollar is going to help. But we, we get, to, that's a part of dominion. Where I put my money is how I start establishing authority. That's why you should own something. Mm. Don't just lease that thing. Own it. Ooh. Buy something. Have the title deed to something. Live well below your means. Accelerate debt. Pay it off. Go find my homie Anthony O'Neill. Buy every book he ever wrote. Listen to his podcast. Go to the, is it the Neat Network? Find it. Yeah. I think it's the Neat Network. They got a whole bunch of content to help you not be dumb with your money. Anthony O'Neill. Hey, yo, shout out. I love you, bro. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help us understand that, that we can support the things that we want to see. And we do not have to support the things we don't want to see. And if we have solidarity like that, if the if the believers in Jesus Christ had the same solidarity as the as the uh, black community in the '60s, child, please, they would not stop us. Why you think Malcolm X is dead? Why you think MLK is dead? Why you think RFK is dead? Why you think JFK is dead? Why you think Medgar Evers is dead? Five people got assassinated in nine years, fam. In this country. Not in freaking Iran. Not in, right. you know what I'm saying? Not in Beirut. Here. Not in Africa. Here. Nine years in this country, in the 60s, five people got assassinated, and we were like, in other news, like, what the? So, um, and I'm not a... I'm not a political scientist, uh, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not a historian in that way. I just know what I read, and I'd be like, damn, what was that? So, um, yo, take your dollar and put it where you know you can support something that's really, really good. I'll give you another thing. I don't, I don't, I don't have the, um, uh, and I'm. I just want you to know, I'll be practicing what I'm preaching. I this is like rubbed off. So, but I have. Uh, 
this lady sent me some organic chapstick and it's got eucalyptus in it and some other stuff or whatever. I love this stuff. I bought her out. Mm. I took every I'm cuz I'm I get excessive like that. I don't be saving if you ever go grocery shopping and you expect me to leave you a pack of bacon, it's not going to happen. <laughs> if if it's time for me to grocery shop, I am getting if there's six p- packages of bacon there, right. the turkey bacon, I'm I'm taking all six. <laughs> and I'm putting two in the refrigerator and four in the freezer. And you're stuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people be like, oh, I'll just take two because somebody else. But that's a grocery store. The grocery store got to restock that shit. What? Don't be dependent on me, nigga. I got people in my house that need to be fed. <laughs> my son's 15. I got a 13-year-old. Them jokers is hungry. I got to go. So... But I choose to spend my money in certain places. Why? Because I know that there's value there. Right. If I support this business, it's going to be a blessing to me. And they value what I value. Why, th- th- this is the nature of communities. Common unity. Mm. I am not getting... Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh, Ooh, cook, Holy Ghost. I am not putting a dollar where I don't have common unity. I'm going to say that again. I will not put a dollar where there is no common unity. I won't give a dollar to a church Mm. if there's no common unity. I won't give a dollar to a business if there's no common unity. I ain't giving a dollar to a brand if it's not no common unity. Yeah. Oh, Tim, well, if that's the case, why are you still drinking Starbucks? I have common unity with that chai tea. <laughs> Not with the corporation. You'll never buy a Rolex like you told me at the mall? Yeah, I'll Rolex never buy a Rome- Rolex. I don't know what Rolex is doing, but I don't. And there's nothing wrong with a Rolex. Please understand there's nothing wrong with a Rolex. There's nothing wrong with Balenciaga. There's nothing wrong with Gucci. There's nothing wrong. Like, like I, I just wouldn't wear that. I have no common unity with them. Yeah. I don't expect a secular company to have a theological compass. So everything ain't that serious. But when you start getting overt with it in a way that convicts me, then I just stop supporting you. And people have different convictions. So I don't think, I, I, I'm not going to get into like, I think every believer should stop buying this or stop eating that or stop frequenting this place and stop supporting this place. I'm talking, I get a personal conviction for things. But I do know my personal conviction is not a commandment from God. I don't watch movies with nudity in it. It's a personal conviction. If I wind up in a movie and there's a nude scene coming, I close my eyes. I'll turn my head. That's my personal conviction. I'm not going to tell nobody boycott the whole movie. Now, you shouldn't be watching porn. But you, you might not have the same conviction I have around you know, a steamy love scene. It don't take much for me. For my fl- look, I exposed myself to pornography when I was twelve. So any kind of any kind of suggestive theme is gonna be a gateway for me. So I don't need to see none of it. I guard my eyes. I guard my ears. I don't listen to secular music like that. When I sit down and listen to an album from a secular artist, I listen to it one time from beginning to end, all at once. I'm not bumping Kendrick Lamar every day. It's my personal conviction. If you want to listen to Kendrick Lamar when you work out and you can still speak in tongues and be sensitive to the Lord, do you. If you can go to Beyonce concert and dress in costume and get in formation and still get close to God, do you. Right. If you can listen to Nas and Jay-Z every single day and still get close to Jesus, do you. I can't. I can't do it. So I won't. And I'm not putting my dollar where there is no common unity. So um, personal convictions, are they a commandment from God? Nah, it's personal to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love the honesty of I have no clue. But a personal conviction uh, is not a commandment from God. (laughs) 
commandments from God are commandments from God. For the 29 people. 28% of people, 29% of people that, that say yes, they are a commandment from God. No, they're not. A commandment from God is a commandment from God, whether you feel personally convicted or not. Yeah. Let me help you. Hopefully that stat starts to go down. <laughs> it's switching up real quick. Yeah, but, but think about it. A personal conviction and a commandment God cannot be the same thing. A commandment from God is a commandment from God. And a commandment from God doesn't care about your personal conviction. <laughs> I just want to let that marinate. A lot of marinating today. Right? I will not look at anything vile and vulgar. Like, like that's a that 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 that's a that's a commandment. That 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 is that is that is a personal attribute that is in scripture that I need to try to adhere to. Now, whether I personally agree with it or not, I just have to I have to submit to it. Mm. Being faithful to one woman for your life. I don't care if you're personally convicted by that. It's a commandment. <laughs> so whether you want to do it or not, guess what? Fornication. Doesn't matter if you have a personal conviction on it. It's a commandment. Yeah. Can't do it. Okay. I'm going to let that marinate. Let's giddy. Let's giddy. Okay. What are we doing? This good. This is a good first hour. I like this hour. Went down to 21%. Hey, <laughs> well, when what? you, you know, if you know, you know. Like, you know what I mean? We've got a question for you, Tim. Question is. From Jarrell Anderson. Major question. Is it okay for believers to watch Harry Potter? My wife has a huge issue with this and thinks... A part of protecting your eye, your eye gate means not watching Harry Potter and kids can't watch it. I think that's a personal conviction thing. Mm. I really do. Like, some people see Harry Potter as just fictional mm -hmm. and storytelling uh, in a certain type of genre. Other people think it's a portal to hell. Mm -hmm. Like this, open yourself up to sorcery and witchcraft and all kind of stuff. Some people are just more sensitive than others. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can't answer that question. That's your household. Right. Don't d do what, um, uh, what does scripture say? Uh, as much as life within you live peaceably with all men, especially your wife, <laughs> especially your husband. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, when I was growing up, my, my mom wouldn't let me watch, uh, the Smurfs. Cause Gargamel. Mm -hmm. Papa Smurf was into them incantations. And she was like, uh-uh, I ain't going to have no... We couldn't watch He-Man by the power of Grace School. By the power of God. He shot that by... Like, like that, that... My mama wasn't playing none of that, right? We couldn't watch He-Man, fam. We couldn't... Skeletor? <laughs> Dude has a skull for a face. That what are you talking about? That one was scary. You're, like, like, we couldn't get into any of that. I thought the... I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a storyteller. I thought, the, I thought the cartoons were dope. But my mama was not having none of that. I think that's a personal conviction, though, right? Because everybody don't feel that way. Everybody don't feel it. Now, if you buy into that and, and, and you came out of witchcraft and sorcery and all that kind of stuff, and you're, and if your overall sensitivity to something like that is, is, like, really, really high, then you don't need to touch it. I remember going to Jerusalem with Juliet, and we went, to, we went up to the top of the, um, uh, you know, we, went, we, we, saw, we were at the Welling Wall, and then we went up there where the Dome of the Rock is, where the, where the Dome of the Rock is, is controlled by uh, Muslims. And my wife is so sensitive to the spirit of God and other spirits, she, she walked off. She was like, I cannot take this. I got I to gotta go. Uh -uh, it's too demonic up here. She said, I can feel it all. I can't do it. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel what she felt. Um, and, and, and so it doesn't mean that I'm carnal and she's real spiritual. It just means she's very sensitive to something that I, mm -hmm. I'm i not sensitive to. Totally. It doesn't affect me the way it affects her. So she ain't walking away like, I can't believe you can stay up here. And I'm not sitting up there like, I can't believe you got to leave. Right? Mm -hmm. I'll give you another one. We, I'll never forget, Ju Juliet used to uh, uh, work for Benny Hinn. 
Uh, actually, let me keep it a buck. I used to work for Benny Hinn as well. I actually got fired. Let me keep it um, a buck and a half. Uh, you know, vulnerability is our superpower. I actually got fired by Benny Hinn Ministries because I had a porn addiction. And uh, I was the mailman there. And I uh, I left um, uh, after after work. I was... Uh, I got caught looking at pornography on a company computer. Then I got fired. <sighs> Just so y'all know where I was in my 20s. That's why when I talk about all this stuff, I lived it. I, I don't, I'm not theorizing none of this stuff with you. I, I, I know what it is to be an addict. I know what it is to have a messed up marriage. I know what it is to not have control of your flesh. So... I got I got a bunch of stories for you. Some of the stories I can't tell y'all yet because my kids are not of age and I haven't had conversations with them privately before I start talking about some of the stuff publicly. Uh, but just know, I went through all this stuff. So anyway, um, uh, we we were at a uh, we were at a where were we? We were at a Benny Hinn crusade, and uh, y'all can talk about. Uh, uh, Benny in whatever ways or think what he w- did was sensational, or weird, or whatever. But there were there were authentic moves of God and and the power of the Holy Spirit um, at his crusades. And so we were at a crusade, and you know the little fire on you thing that he be doing, like <laughs> all that kind of stuff, right? He was doing it to like sections of like the arena, right? And I was holding hands. We were all in a line holding hands. Um, and we were, we were like up the rafters and he did it to like this whole section. When I tell you my wife went out like a fish flopping on the ground, just boop, uh, like Prince of God hit her. I am standing straight up. Right. Like. That was me too, bro. I felt bad. Am I even saved? Right. Like, was I? Right. Did it miss me? But I'm different. But when I, I like, when people would lay hands on me at church, I'd be looking at them like, you good? Right. Like, I wouldn't be like, nee. only a few times have somebody laid hands on me and I just felt so overwhelmed that I needed to fall down. But again, I, 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 I didn't have to be deconstructed from, like, playing church. I never played church. So if it wasn't an authentic move of God for me that I was actually experiencing, I wasn't about to do what everybody else was doing and try to fit in. So there have been a couple of times people have laid hands on me and I felt the power of God and and and, and it just brought me to my knees or um, I was so overcome with emotion that I, I just kind of fell down. But, like, I could probably count mm-hmm. in, you know, almost 30 years, probably on one hand. Like, and maybe a toe. How many times? Well, not one hand and a toe. Like, maybe maybe two hands. Maybe two. But, but like, it's just not a, it's not a big, it's not me. Doesn't anyway. Less of, it doesn't mean you're less of a believer. Doesn't either. mean you're less of a believer. I, I made a mistake one day. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Let me tell you about, let me tell you about how stupid Tim was in his 20s. I made the mistake one day. The mistake. The egregious, pompous, arrogant, self-righteous mistake of saying to Juliet, uh, I don't even know how close your relationship is to God. I don't see you in your word. I literally thought in my arrogance and my smug self-righteousness that not seeing in her in her word me not seeing her right. in her word was an indication of where her spiritual walk was. Man, please. How dumb. How? D- Dude, like I'm with my wife 24-7. How would I know? It's a relationship she has to maintain. What the hell am I doing over here? I don't even see you in your word. Being self-righteous, that's what I was being. Being a complete a-hole. Right. And I'm clear, clearly I was in my word and still struggling with porn. 
So who was closer? Um, See, I don't want to talk like this, man. <laughs> yeah, y'all want one of them. Some of y'all want them mentors that don't have don't have no testimony. <laughs> Just been batting a thousand from the beginning. I was a virgin till I got married and. Gave my life to Jesus and just just always had the fire of God and just never, never had a lustful thought. And <laughs> Keto diet. I was about to go, I was about to go real wild real quick on my next sentence and the yeah. Holy Spirit said, da, 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 da. <laughs> Holy Spirit said, da, 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 da. don't do that one, don't do that one, don't do that one. So, um, uh, Struggles with a porn addiction. Not a struggle. Amen, 51%. 17%. I'm in it right now. Um, praying for y'all. Thank you for your honesty. And then I'm deaf, tempted, and running. Yeah! 32%. I'm love let's hold it down. Let's hold it down. Yeah, I've said some dumb stuff to my wife down through the years. Like we're real, real dumb. Real. Real. Does it make you cringe? Oh God. Cringe, embarrassed, just, hey, man, but I got married at 23. What the hell did I know? I didn't know nothing. I didn't know nothing. You know what I mean? But this this is this is why you got to have some stick to Like Like, like, 24 years later, y'all hear me talking now. You're like, my boyfriend should be like you. My husband needs to freaking you need to mentor my husband because he needs to be you i used to be your husband right. <laughs> i used to be a raggedy nigga like I, I did not know what i was doing and still trying to do it and that's how we all grow but i was about this life though that's what juliet always knew she was like i stay with you because yeah you were stupid and you was always working on yourself Always. Like, I, I I, never made no excuse. This just me. Mm -hmm. That ain't ever come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Not one time. This, this, this just me. I don't understand. That's how you met me. Right. This just who I am. Nah, man. Yeah. You hear you hear a guy or a girl talking about this just me, this, this how you met me, they're making an excuse not to have transformation in Christ. Woo. You don't want to change. You make that statement. You don't want to change. Book. Okay. Let's go. Romans. Get the Bible. That was so unnecessary. <laughs> that lazy. Get the Bible. Like it's like Tony Bennett woke up <laughs> from being roofied by Bill Cosby. <laughs> Get the Bible. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. This is our Romans twelve one and two. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. God, I can let this cook. This could be the whole rest of the pot right here. This might be. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let that word means allow. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You cannot change your life if you don't change the way you think. You will not change your habits if you don't change the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The reason why some of y'all don't know God's will for your life right now is because you won't allow him to change the way you think. Woo! I don't know where my purpose is. I don't know where God wants me to go in life. You won't change the way you think. Change the way you think. Let, allow, let God, allow God to change the way you think. Then you will know what is God's will for your life. You won't know that before. You think you're about, you think you're about to find out what God's will is in your life and you still thinking like you thinking? And some of y'all are all into behavioral that's the only thing you look at. I'm behaving the right way. I'm behaving the right way. I'm behaving the right way. Okay, so you're not having sex, but you're thinking about it. You're not being petty, but you think petty. <laughs> just letting it, just, just let it breathe real quick. 
Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm in that old church mode now. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Huh? This is how you get Bible drills put on the inside of you. This is how you meditate on a scripture. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Say it over and over again till some changes in your spirit. Turn off that secular music till something changes in your spirit. Stay on your knees till something breaks in the spirit. Ah! Read that Bible until all them idols drop out of your soul. Bring the high places down. This is what you press B for. This is, what you, this is why you press B. You already got a little bit of money. You doing something. Okay, yay you. Got your little car, got your house, you're doing right, but you can't stop having sex with your boyfriend. What is you doing? You can't have stop, stop having sex with your girlfriend. What is you doing? It's wash, rinse, repent. See what I did there? <laughs> Very good. You over here on some wash, rinse, repent. You know, just still trying to... <sighs> Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get it in, man. You have to allow God to do that. You have to give him permission to do that. Y'all be throwing up these lazy prayers. Lord, help me. Because you know I'm weak in this area. Lord, help me. That's lazy. Lord, I allow you to come get my mind. Snatch this thought. Come snatch this thought. Right. This thought sucks. Right. I hate this thought. Come get this thought. You know I shouldn't be thinking like this. Okay. Let's go to Ephesians. <laughs> Ephesians. <laughs> I said it the second time and thought, where is this French person coming from? And then you said, are you French? Okay. Uh, okay, Ephesians chapter number 6, uh, verse number 10. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in, the, and in his mighty power. I got everything memorized in King James, so I almost said be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, right? Uh, a, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his power and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. This is why I don't clap back at people. Right. I might respond to what you're saying, but I know who's really influencing you. Mm. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me just read that whole thing because it's too juicy. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to res so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these things, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And pray for me, too. Ask God to give me the right word so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. I am in chains now, still preaching this message of, as God's ambassador. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. It's good stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Sedrina or Sedrina. That emoji. <laughs> that, that emoji looks painful, sis. Hope everything's good. We got some voice message Q&As as well. Richard. Carrasquillo. Man, that's a beautiful last name. 
Carrasquillo. Carrasquillo. Did I say it good? Yeah. Beautiful. Let's get it. All right. Okay. Let's get it popping. We'll be, who who we hearing from? Super grateful for this opportunity to ask a question. I will keep it brief. Uh, my name is Kiera and I am a fan. Uh, getting right into the question, however, I wanted to ask, um, just going to throw this out there as a pastor's child, have been one all 34 years of my life. Uh, I wanted to ask about just sharing some ins on, insight on how you have learned to balance the desire to reach a diverse group of people through your words, um, through your platform, in an unconventional approach um, with the need to also stay true to your own calling even when it differs from what might be expected from you in a traditional or spiritual role. I often find myself in untraditional spaces, but tend to reach those in untraditional spaces in a way that traditional folks can't seem to comprehend. So I'm mm -hmm. often looked at as just being extremely different. So how do you navigate those challenges or criticisms along the way? Thanks so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. I love you, Kara, and thank you so much for answering that question. I, girl, I heard so much of what you did not say. <laughs> Ooh, I heard so much of what you didn't say. You are you are very good with your words. Okay, so um, let's talk through. Uh, Let, let, let me, I'm, I'm, oh, somebody trying to get on. Okay, that's, that's for you, Rob. I just gave, gave you the Wi-Fi password. Um, so, Kira, let's, let's get into, I, I'm pulling up a verse, and I want to pull up the verse before, uh, before I even answer this. So let me get this real quick. Fuzzy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 22. So many scriptures invade my head. Sometimes I just got to get a word on it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 22. I'm going to read this first, and then I'm going to answer your questions. Okay, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 22. Uh, when, I am, uh, when I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessing. Uh, I try to find common ground with everyone doing everything I can to save some. So um, uh, I've gone through this, what you're going through um, and, and this tension that you're holding. I, I know it very, very well. I'm very familiar with it. Um, uh, I was, I was born and raised in the hood and, um, I gave my life to Jesus and, you know, I'm trying my best to be the, I'm trying my best to be like a good believer. Right. And so I'm, I'm taking all these cues from church and, um, I can, distinctly remember not on, like I understand what it means we, we, in, within the black community and I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, other uh, minority communities we know what we mean when we say code switching um, but there's we think we only code switch with white people we code switch with church people too we code switch in denominations we code switch with our organizations, we, everybody's code switching, right? And so I didn't know how much code switching I was doing between being in church and being in the world. And so uh, uh, now code switching benefited me, church code switching, because I was able to preach the gospel all around the world. Uh, great. Now I'm in a season where it's like I'm not code switching no more, Yeah. right? 
And me not code switching has allowed me to reach more people <laughs> than when I was code switching because the assignment on my life at this point is for the highways, byways, bushes, and shrubs. And so um, all the people that are at the wedding feast already, and I'm and I highways, byways, bushes, and shrubs comes from um, uh, Matthew 22 and Luke 14. Highways, byways, bushes, and shrubs, um, you, when you're talking to people who are on the fringe of faith or, or just unbelievers, they talk a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going down into the highways, byways, bushes, and shrubs talking about, praise the Lord, everybody. Isn't God good? Listen, the atmosphere is charged. <laughs> I believe God is, I believe there's a shift in the atmosphere where God's going to do something supernatural in your life. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody talking like that in the airport. <laughs> ain't nobody talking like that at Starbucks. Ain't nobody talking like that down the street. So, so when I'm talking to somebody, I'm coming as the 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 most authentic form of myself as possible. Now, I ain't for everybody, mm -hmm. which is why God has so many disciples, because everybody ain't for everybody. So I know that the way I talk can be off off putting for people that don't. This is not normally how they talk or behave. Cool, it's all good. Mm -hmm. But I'm I have found my audience. Yeah. And I have quadrupled down on my audience. Mm -hmm. I'm only looking for our audience yeah. to buy Welcome to the Basement. <laughs> I'm not trying to break into an audience that would be like, oh, my God, I don't like the way he talks. Don't read my book. Don't listen to this podcast. Don't download the B-Side app. I'm not for all people, but I'm for some people. And once you find your people, talk to your people. Find your audience and talk to your audience. Jesus had an audience. It was the lost sheep of Israel. I didn't come for those who think they're saved, Jesus said. I came for those that know they're lost. <laughs> So you got you got to be able to find out who you're talking to and then don't be ashamed to talk to them. Mm. And when you hear the traditionalists in your ear talking about, I can't believe you talking like that. Remind them who you called to. Mm. I'm not called to you. If I was called to you, I would talk to you. I ain't talking to you. <laughs> Pharisees, Pharisees keep running up on Jesus like, who are you? Who do you think you are? If you're a true rabbi, who is your teacher? This this question, this uh, how many times does scripture tell us that they, they came to try to trap him? Mm. Jesus wasn't talking to them, yep. but they was always trying to talk to him. So don't, thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh, let me, I need to rest here for a minute. Do not waste your time with words for people who are not a part of your audience. Wow. Don't give them your time. Don't give them your energy. Don't you go digging down through the comment section looking for the negative person that has Ooh. something to say about what, what you do and how you do it. They disagree with you. They're making little taunts and saying all kind of stuff. You Don't, don't respond to them. Mm -hmm. If you find somebody that genuinely doesn't understand, respond to that person. You might gain a friend. They might really appreciate that you gave them extra context and feedback to what you said. But for the most part, don't, man, don't get out here right. talking to people that they're not your audience. Talk to your people. I'm talking to dwellers. I don't get on Monday lives trying to convince people that already made their opinion about me that I'm not who they think I am. I'm not talking to you. Mm -hmm. Talk to your audience. You can see this over and over and over again with Jesus. He didn't mind, take, he didn't mind the test of the Pharisees. But his energy wasn't focused on Pharisees. Mm. Let me give let me let me give you uh, Matthew twenty two, and then I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you the the the, the key sections of Matthew twenty two, and then I'm gonna give you uh, Luke fourteen that 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 just are loud to me, and I have it I actually put it in my Bible in in blue. Um, anything I think is like God's words, I put in orange, and then. Um, I got it blue here because this, this is what I'm focused on. 
the wedding uh the wedding feast is ready and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. Do you think people on the street corner talk like people at a wedding banquet? So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike, and the banquet hall was filled with guests. Good and bad alike. Do you talk to good people and bad people the same way? I don't. All right, now Luke 14 for the contrast. And again, even though this is a synoptic gospel, I did the same thing. I put it in orange and then I put blue where I felt like it resonated with with me cuz this keeps me this keeps me focused on who my my target audience is. Go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. After the servant has after the servant had done this, he reported there is still room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house may be full. Man, I'm after highways, byways, bushes, and shrubs, man. I'm going after lost people. The people that are already in say, already got saved and they already love Jesus, you already at the wedding banquet, <laughs> amen you. I'm hollering at the person that's on the fringe. I'm hollering at the person that's under the uh, the, the freeway uh under the bridge, right? Like I'm, 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 I'm talking to hood niggas, right? I'm talking to people that this cadence does not bother them. Th this is how I talk. This is how I, I've always talked. I told you, my boy Robert Purvey is here. Have have I always talked to you like this? Always. Have I ever? Hey man, listen. You know, Rob, what you need to do. <laughs> you know, you're going through these struggles, and but what you need to do is just live righteously. I've told you to do that. Have I told you like that? Nah, it's you meet people where they are. You meet them under the bridge. Absolutely. Have I had to use some strong language with you to get your attention? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, because it's me, but you had to, you know. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But you got to cuss that a little more. Yeah, yeah. I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but did you hear the Holy Spirit in it? Absolutely. Okay, so, okay. I'm just trying to. Would you consider yourself one of my disciples? I'm, I'm a dweller. Yes, sir. You've been a dweller. Uh, uh, like original. Original. When it, oh. when it was dust on the wood. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Have I walked through every aspect of your life, high and low? Absolutely. Okay. I'm just. There's only one way to do this, fam. And we walk with each other. That's exactly right. That's that's the beautiful. That's thing. right. It it has been reciprocal. Yeah. This hasn't been no. I'm sunning you. Nah. Live up to my expectation. Kiss the ring. Hey, check this out. And I never preached at your church. Never asked. Never wanted to. Because this, this. That's exactly right. This is how I grew. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, we ain't on that doc, man, doc. <laughs> I'm going to come do your conference. You're going to come do my conference. Right. We go. We do Cheesecake Factory, bro. <laughs> That's what we do. We have church at Cheesecake Factory, man. Bump that stage. <laughs> hey, I'm so glad you said bump that stage. Yeah, bump be that stage. Be because um, you got people out here trying to build relationships 40 minutes at a time. Right. Yeah, y'all wasn't ready for that one. Think about it. These, dude, these dudes trying to build relationships through conferences 40 minutes at a time. Hey, so glad you're at my conference. Man, this is my boy. He's about to come give an exciting, dynamic word. 45 minutes on the clock. Y'all trying to build relationships 45 minutes at a time. Meanwhile, over the last decade and a half, I got thousands of hours walking with this young man. Like, I mean, show you how to do this, son. Gonna show you how to bust dope lyrics for fun. Gonna show you how to pack with, gonna show you how to bust without capping a gun. Ooh. That was an old mixtape I did. Anyway. Praising the noonday. 
Even though cops patrolled, I made payroll. Okay. I'm just... What are we doing? What, what, what do we want to do? Oh, are we going to read this one? We got this one, and we still got a bunch of voice messages. Hi, here. Rachel. Um, was there a time where you felt like you weren't being filled in your marriage? My husband said he's not being filled, and I feel discouraged. I made mistakes, and he stuck with me. But any Bible verses you can share, please? Not being filled in your marriage. He's not being filled, and I feel discouraged. Um... Let, let me pick at this a little bit. Um, a couple of questions I would ask is, is he saying he doesn't feel fulfilled or filled by you? Um, does it have anything to do with you? Because sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's done. You, you, you've acknowledged that you've made mistakes and he's stuck with you. Also admit he's made mistakes and you've stuck with him. Right. It's never that one-sided. Right. A lot of times, if if you're in a marriage and you've made big mistakes, you 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 tend to uh, what we call in therapy glorify the other partner. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. perfect. I'm not. Ah. They're 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 yeah. they're they're the ones that do everything right. I don't. <laughs> and you're like, nah. Right. Upon further investigation, once you get healed from your own trauma and you forgive yourself, then you then you can honestly look at them and be like. Nigga, you ain't perfect either. Like, you know uh, what I'm saying? Like, you, maybe you didn't do what I did, but don't sit here and try to act like you righteous, right? Feel by me. Okay, so he doesn't feel like he's filled by you. Tell tell homie it'll pass. That's good. <laughs> That's good. You want a Bible verse? This too shall pass. <laughs> you don't feel filled by me right now? Stick around, my friend. It'll come back. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. I've been married to Juliet for 24 years. I've known her for 25 years. I haven't been in love with Juliet for 24 years. Mm -hmm. I've been committed, though. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all ain't going to feel me every day of my waking life 24 years in a row? Impossible. It's impossible, fam. And, and Juliet's... <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something about my wife, man. Hey, I am in love with my wife. Like, I am, she's just, she's the finest woman I've ever laid eyes on, personally. She's not, she's not the only beautiful woman in the world. She's just the finest woman I have ever, like, for me, para mi, she is the most beautiful woman I've ever laid eyes on. And she cannot fulfill me. Mm -hmm. Only Christ can. Only Christ can. She is going to definitely let me down. I'm going, I, I guarantee you Juliet's going to let me down. She ain't going to even try to do it. Right. She going to do it. Because we're going to miscommunicate, and I'm going to have an uncommunicated expectation. I didn't explain my needs like I wanted it right away, and I, and I assumed she was going to do something and pick up on the way I was feeling. And, oh, no, child, please. Uh-uh. Impossible. That's mission impossible. So if that dude is, but tell homie to stick around. Tell homie to stick around because you don't get to 24 thinking that you're going to be filled every single day. You get to 24 because you vowed for better or for worse, uh -huh. for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health until death do us part. That's what you vowed. Mm -hmm. So tell, tell your husband to remember his vow. And I'm, I, it doesn't even sound like you're saying it. It's that, that serious. But... Listen, man, all, a lot of these marriages are just is just glorified dating. Mm. And the reason why I know it's glorified dating because y'all niggas think y'all can just break up. It just didn't work out. Irreconcilable differences. Code word for y'all misunderstood each other. Right. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know her body was going to look like this after the kids. I just the stretch marks I can't get past. That's your baby. Right. Broke her skin out like that. And 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 let's and all these men, listen, all hey dog. <laughs> listen, if your wife could to if your wife, I'm gonna speak up for some wives right now. If your wife could keep it a buck with you, she never signed up for five inches. While you worried about her body shape and 
she gained a few pounds and all that kind of stuff, what she's never told you is she had an eight inch peen and she married five. Amen. And she died to she died to the thought of the eight inch peen and accepted your five. And you got a gut. And if it's five and you got a gut, you you can't see it. <laughs> hey dog, I'm just you know what I'm saying? Because we always out here trying to act like the guy and the, my wife is letting herself go and she doesn't sexually satisfy me. Let your wife talk a buck. Your ego is too fragile. That's why she never brought it up. You have no idea how many women are sparing men's egos in the bedroom and in, and in counseling because you never get over it. You never get over it if she really told you how she felt about your pain. You would never get over it if she really told you how she felt about your teeth. You would never get over it if she really kept it a buck about your back hair. You would never get over it. Oh, my God. I feel an anointing on my life right now. I feel an anointing. Is it in the chat? Where are my girls at? Where are my wives at? I'm just trying to tell. I'm just trying to. You would never get over it. Some of y'all's breath. Your nails. Chow. Cuticles. These men's egos are so fragile. You would never get over it. Right. So be, so all these men always complaining about these women and damn, she don't do this and she don't do that. And I just need this from my girl and I need that from my girl. Well, if you stop watching porn, you wouldn't have nothing to compare it to. Uh-huh. And she can't compare it to your hand either. So maybe you should let go of yourself. <laughs> let go of yourself. Let go and let God. <laughs> let it go. No, no, no. Let go and let her. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> let it go. Just trying to tell y'all. You want to hit a voice message Q&A or are you on still on? No, I, 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 I need to let... I'm feeling like something right now. Amen, brother. I feel something right here. Uh -huh. I feel something right in this vein. I feel Ooh. God. Huh? <laughs> I feel God right here. I feel him in here. Shaky hand. Huh? I feel him right in. I, I, I think we just I think we just hit a vein now. <laughs> I felt something shift. And what did I feel shift? All this blame. That's what I felt. Right. All this blame and all that you you sitting up here. Got this girl like second guessing everything that she does, and <laughs> she being very kind of you not to mention all the kind of stuff she could say. Right. But it would hurt your feelings and your ego, and you never get over it, and you know, be limping every day. And it is limp. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, <laughs> there's some wives out here dealing with a lot. For real. Why you talking about you ain't you ain't being filled? And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that you're not justified. You might be justified. All I'm saying is some of these dudes out here should not be should not be complaining. All I'm saying should not be complaining. Should not be complaining. I'm I'm trying to just trying to some of y'all should just not be complaining. That's all I'm saying. All right, Holy Spirit. Just stop complaining. Stop complaining. You got a good one. You got a good one. Just be all right. Be all right. Uh, go back up. I just saw something with uh, right there. Oh, yeah, because he can do what? I can't do because he's a man. It's okay, but as a woman, would be labeled makes me sick. Diana, I, 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 yes, I feel you. I feel you. I get it. Uh, uh go back up. Might leave my Muslim husband because he, because of the constant pressures of his family. I'm not sure what to do. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. He's going to have to learn to leave and cleave. Mm -hmm. If you're saying you have to leave your husband because of constant pressures of his family, mm -hmm. that means he is not confronting his family and defending you. Right. 
He's allowing that to happen. Right. And I hope God reveals that to him. And that he comes to Isa. Mm -hmm. Pregunta, can you discuss what the editing process was like for you and your book <laughs> and how you went about finding an editor? Um, so I didn't write my book because uh, I'm not a I'm not an author. Um, Sydney wrote my book, and I don't even know if Sydney wants me to tell people that I, she wrote my book, but she did. <laughs> so Sydney wrote my book. Um, Sydney's gonna write all my books. Please, Sydney, write all my books. <laughs> Please write all my books. Um, uh, and the editors. Uh, the the book publisher has editors. I, I I don't do. I can't do that. I'm not an author. I need to say that. I talk for a living. I am not an author. It just so happens that I can put my ideas um, into a process that makes it easy for ghostwriters to spit my books out. So, um, Sydney did that. I didn't do that. And um, she's gonna do all my books if I have anything to do with it. In Jesus' name. All right, let's highlight somebody else. Go for someone over here. Hi, Uncle Tim. My name is Danielle, and I'm a creative who's been itching to move back to L.A. to pursue my career. But before I'm allowed to, I've been tasked by God to write a feature film dealing with police brutality and police gangs like Linwood, Vikings, etc. Um, my main character is a Christian, and I want to make sure that I'm infusing God into my script in a meaningful way, but I'm unsure how to go about it where we can see it played out in tangible ways. I'm also unsure where to go in the Bible for a biblical solution, so I was wondering if you had any suggestions. Thank you. Love you guys. Bye. Yeah, uh, first of all, I, thank you. Anytime I hear, the, when they say Uncle Tim, it's just, uh, it it endear, it warms my heart. And it makes my nieces mad. So, uh, like my blood nieces right. are like, that's my uncle! So, um, anyway, I, um, what I would say is, uh, girl, write this script. Like, like get this movie out um, of your head. Uh, but this character needs to, th this character needs to, really be um, fleshed out, like, thoroughly. And what I mean by that is, uh, yes, you want this main character to be a believer, but if you, against the backdrop of police brutality and against the backdrop of injustices that are going on around, um, that needs to also be, that, that, that also needs to inform how this character is going to interact with his or her world. And so um, I, I don't like Christian movies that um, uh, that don't ground the believer in the actual environment that they're in. Mm. They, they, they seem to be kind of floating above the environment as opposed to being grounded in it. And so um, the Old Testament could give you crazy amounts of ideation uh, in the character formation. Um, so I, 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 I would uh, encourage you to look to the Old Testament. The stories are just richer, um, and the drama is just way more intense. Um, and I think, I think you should, I think you should read the whole Old Testament. That's gonna be my, <laughs> that that's gonna be my, um, getting that word, that my my encouragement to you because I think as you go through it you're going to find some themes that are going to be like, oh, my gosh. Because mm. the, the, the Bible spares no, no expense, uh, uh, Genesis 2 revelation, about the lives of the people that were trying to live out their faith. But they do it in such a – everybody's grounded in the reality of what they're going through. Abraham's lying because he's afraid of his wife being murdered, right? David, David has Uriah killed because he gets his wife pregnant. Like, they are grounded in their reality, right? Ain't nobody, like, praying over the fact that I committed adultery. Nathan had to come tell this dude, you're foul. So, anyway, I hope that helps. Hey, Tim, thank you so much for taking my question. Um, my question is, how do you navigate a marriage where 
the two are in different spaces spiritually. Yes, you are both believers, but when it comes to things like the prophetic, um, if one grew up around it or is very familiar with it and the other one is not, how do you navigate that? Like um, when words are prophesied to us or over us and then like one of them, like one spouse is working the word and the other one is just kind of like, we'll just see if it happens. Is God still faithful to fulfill his word even when the two don't necessarily agree? Absolutely he is. Thank you for your question. Absolutely he is. Um, and and y'all could even be in agreement on the prophetic and still not agree with the prophetic word that was spoken, right? And so what, what, uh, thank you. Okay, okay, Holy Spirit. This is specifically for you. Like literally, I was about to start talking and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, just give her this verse. So I'm going to give you this verse. I, I hope it doesn't make you angry that I'm just going to give you this verse and literally chunk deuces. B because I really do feel like nice. this is what the Lord yep. gave me for you specifically. So this is uh, Hebrews 10, verse 36, NLT. Patient endurance is what you need mm. now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Mm -hmm. That's all you need is patience. Yeah. Tim, I was curious on your advice to navigating through a newly s season of singleness. Recently went through a very tough breakup and um, it was a relationship inside the church. So it's been difficult to navigate having to see each other um, constantly having the same friend group and um, just kind of navigating being happy by myself again. So I was just curious, and I, I appreciate it. Appreciate you asking the question, man. First, um, breakups are hard. Yeah. They just are. Breakups are hard. And when, they're, when, when they happen in the, in the same community and, and you got to see them, it, they're even harder, right? Because you're constantly reminded every time you see this individual or you hear this individual's name through mutual friends, all that kind of stuff. Um, so my first thing, the first way I want to encourage you is to, to, to grieve. Mm -hmm. If that relationship really meant something to you, then it's worth you grieving. Like right. for real, for real. Yes. Like take your time and like grieve it. Mm -hmm. If you haven't cried, cry. Yep. If you haven't, if you haven't shouted and in frustration, like, ah, Whatever, like, get it out. Is if if it meant something, it's worthy of the 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 grieving process. Um. And after you grieve it, um. Like own it. Uh, I don't have. I I don't think I have any. I'm trying to think, it wasn't like I was like the serial dater or whatever. But I don't think there was anybody that I dated or whatever as a believer um, that if I saw him in a grocery store, I would, like, try to duck. Right. I could look him straight in their eyes and be like, hey, it's so good to see you. Give him a big hug or whatever. Um, because I did try to do my best to honor them mm -hmm. in the process. And sometimes stuff just don't work out, bro. Right? And so... Right. Being in that, being in the rhythm of a relationship, and then having to step back into a dating, uh, step back into a single rhythm, mm -hmm. that can take some time, man. So just give yourself time, and it's probably going to be exasperated around the holidays. Like around this time, is your problem? It's going to be loud. Yeah. I had the homie text me this morning. We have a group text with some with some other friends and. He was like, hey, please just be praying for a brother because it's winter and I'm single. And that's just a different, <laughs> uh, that's, yo, that's a different, that's a different weight to carry. Yeah. That's a different thing to have to navigate. So uh, my encouragement is to grieve well. Um, 
embrace the new season and uh, give your time to get used to singleness again. So I hope that helps. Hi, Uncle Tim. I listen to your podcast all the time, and I really need your help with this one. I'm 24 years old, and I've been in a relationship with the same guy since I was 15. He funded my medical school education, which I couldn't finish since he stopped helping me financially, and now I owe him $150,000. I recently came to know Christ again, and I've been having a lot of disagreements with him regarding religion, specifically infant baptism, the meaning of salvation, premarital sex, and other things. He's Catholic, and I'm Christian. He has fully devoted himself to me and no doubt loves me very much. He says he does everything to meet my needs and it's disrespectful for me to not meet his specifically sexually. When we do have sex, I end up just crying because I know it's wrong and I try to hide that from him. He paints a beautiful picture of us being together. I won't have to pay him back since we're together. He has a house, we can have kids and everything, the marriage, the ring, have it all. I feel conviction from the Holy Spirit to wait for marriage for any sexual activities, but he thinks since we've been together for so long, it doesn't matter. He tells me to behave like the wife I want to be now, and that nothing should change between us getting married or being together as boyfriend and girlfriend when marriage comes along. I really don't know if I should leave him. I'm struggling to get a job right now, and I feel like I'll never meet anyone again and have to start life over without him. Should I stay? I have no idea what to do. Thank you so much um, for sharing that. Thank you for your bravery, um, your poise, um, and your process. I, I appreciate you. Thank you for being hot with us. Leave him. He is manipulating you. He is gaslighting you. He is... Um, obligating you. He is binding you. You've been with him for nine years. It's a long time. Um, but for him to hold $150,000 over your head, this is going to be harsh to hear but it doesn't sound like he's paid $150,000 for your student loans. Based on how he's speaking to you, he's paid $150,000 to keep having sex with you when he wants to. Um, I am angry for you. Um, I feel very protective of you. My big brother slash daddy thing is flaring up. I, you're 24 years old, so you could actually be my kid. You could actually be my daughter. And and um, if you were my daughter and I was your father and you told me what you just told me, first of all, I'd be so proud of you. I would tell you that I love you. And then I'm so grateful that you would trust me with this aspect of your life. And then I would tell you to leave him. As difficult as that's going to be, I would tell you to leave him. As debilitating as that sounds, I would tell you to leave him. As um, empty as that feels, I would tell you to leave him. Mm. Uh, as financially challenging as it sounds, I'd tell you to leave him. Um, you've been together nine years, you're 24 years old. If he loves you, he'll marry you. Mm. Oh, this is, this, this is harsh to process. Um, and I'm, I'm going to have to say some hard things. Um, and my only hope is that as I process this with you right now, that the Holy Spirit reveals it because this is going to be some harsh stuff to hear. Um, you, 
you have enabled him to treat you like this. You actually taught him to treat you like this. Mm -hmm. And with new insight and revelation where you are now, you realize that this pattern has created a monster. You justifiably want to pivot, but the pivot is going to mean the loss of this relationship. Because um, to course correct means that what he has expected and received for the last nine years, he is no longer going to get. When you make this pivot, he is not going to marry you because he wants a puppet, not a person. And the moment you cut your strings and you relate to him as a person and he realizes he lost his puppet, he is not going to want to be with you anymore. Now, the thought of losing you because he's benefited from this for the last nine years. So the thought of losing you is not going to sit well with him and he is going to gaslight you and he is going to try to manipulate and he is going to get crafty with his words and he is going to throw a whole bunch of stuff at you. So you're going to need a support group to be able to leave him. You will not be able to do this on your own. You try to do this on your own, you will make excuse after excuse to stay with him. So in order to make this transition, the only way you're going to be able to do it is to have a support group around you that is constantly affirming that you are making the right decision to get out of this relationship. He is holding 150 grand over your head like you have been his escort for the last nine years. Love doesn't keep receipts. And so y'all been playing husband and wife, but he still ain't put a ring on it. Hasn't talked about a plan to put a ring on it. Says marriage is somewhere down the road, but y'all are essentially married anyway, not according to biblical standards. Y'all have done all the married things, but y'all ain't married. So you're going to have to leave him, and that's going to hurt. But let me address this fear, and I'm still in this fatherly tone. I want to address this fear that you're going to be alone for the rest of your life. I promise you you're not. Mm -hmm. God already has the man. And I'm not saying as soon as you leave him, the other one's coming, because you're going to need to detox from this dude, because you don't want to bring this, this dude you are currently with into your, re your next relationship. But you won't be alone. Yeah. You will not be alone. But you want, you want the man that's going to be in love with the person you are. And in order to do so, you're going to have to leave the man whose puppet you've been. I love you. I cannot stress that enough. I love you and I'm so proud of you for being bold enough to be able to share this. Now I pray that the Holy Spirit would give you boldness to, to set the boundaries that creates the distance so that your heart can heal mm. from this manipulative relationship that you've been in. I know it didn't start this way, but this is what it's morphed into. So I hope that helps. Uncle Tim, what's going on, sir? And Josh Toronto here. Um, thank you so much for all that you do for us dwellers and for the basement and creating a space where I receive distant mentorship. But my question for you is in regards to a movie that me and my wife saw last night called Leave the World Behind. It's on Netflix now. Pretty interesting film. And the premise of the film is... Pretty much the nation goes under attack with this cybersecurity hack and all phone lines are shut down and the city shuts down power, everything. 
and it has this family stay in this Airbnb and the owner of the Airbnb comes back and he's like, long story short, listen, this is what's happening. One of my clients let me know that there's a cyber attack happening that's shutting everything down. He's actually kind of connected to the cabal and it's winter solstice. All of that to say is my wife wants to now start storing food, preparing, stocking up on things. What's your view on that, man? Just before I make multiple Costco trips and have <laughs> cases and cases of water and storage of food, how do you think we Good should question. plan and prepare if something were to happen like that to this nation? I don't want us to be led by fear. Um, mm -hmm. I want us to be wise and I think it's okay to plan and prepare, but I just don't want us to be led and influenced by fear because of a movie and because certain things that have come out, uh, as of recent. So I know that was word vomiting, but I hope you kind of understand where I'm coming from. Appreciate you, sir. I do. I appreciate you, Josh. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's a real thing. Yeah, man. Let's seriously. keep it a buck. It's a real thing. So, um, I got people that never think anything bad is going to happen, and when it does, they're just devastated, and they usually die first. Um, mm -hmm. And and I got people that uh, I know a guy that has enough food for a family of f family of five for for ten years, not ten months, yes. ten years. So 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 I I got the range and the in the extreme in there. Um. But how much food would be enough food for your family? How much water would be enough water for your family? Um, I wouldn't dismiss her, her, your wife's thoughts, and I don't think you're trying to be uh, dismissive. Um, but what I would also say is that um, we make our plans, but the Lord orders our steps. So make the plans that you want to make. Um, come to some type of agreement of how much is enough just understanding that if if any if any cyber attack happen or anything if they poison our water supply or whatever we are going to be inconvenienced in a way and, and and receive persecution in a way that we have never experienced in our lives and it's going to be a survivalist mentality at that point but i tell you what uh what that movie is portraying in a first world country, people are living out in a third world country right now. Mm -hmm. So maybe you do make a couple of Costco trips and maybe you take a missions trip. Because maybe while taking a missions trip, you're able to see how people in third world countries are already living life with the kind of scenario that was presented in the movie. There's already third world countries where they don't have internet access, where they don't have clean water available without going down to a river, which might be seven miles away. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes preparing in that way is good, but other times putting yourself in that situation and maybe living there, maybe living with a family for a week or a month, uh, could give you some insight as to how to navigate if this ever happened for you in real time. So I hope that helps. Uh, and back for just context, do whatever brings peace at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious on that. God, we got three minutes left. Dude, these, it goes by too fast for me. It really does. So fast. It goes by so fast. Got a dweller getting married this Saturday. Yay, let's go, dweller. Uh, Tim, just wanted to thank you for everything you do and always bringing that heat. Me and my fiance are getting married this Saturday. I just want you to pray for us as we go into the next season. Let's go, Yef. Absolutely. Yef, uh, 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 hit us with your um, cash app if you got one. Let's, get some, let, let's give them some, uh, some marriage money. Yeah, hit us with the cash app, homie. And just, hey, anybody that want to be a blessing to them, Let's be a blessing to them. Bless it up. And let's, and let's play for Yef right now. God, we thank you for this union that you're bringing between Yef and his fiance. God, I pray that uh, this marriage is a picture 
of how Christ loves his bride. Let it be a beautiful revelation of the mystery of how Jesus Christ loves his bride, the church. Bless their union. May, may the blessing upon their family go for a thousand generations, uh, whether they hear uh, Carrie and Cody sing it or not. And uh, God, I just pray for favor to be upon this union and that uh, divorce never be a part uh, of their narrative. In Jesus' name, amen. Cash App has not been confirmed. It's all good. It's all good. So um, what do we got? Two minutes left. Let's get one more voice, and then we out. I love y'all so much. Like I want to do this every day. I just don't think I can right now. The way my life is right now, I couldn't do it every day. Uncle Tim, Basement T. What's up, guys? Hector, Sam, Huli, Nathan, and Noah. I see y'all back there, too. What's up, guys? Uh, I see y'all out here doing all the schoolwork. I'm proud of y'all. Um, <laughs> I My name is Donovan. I'm 22. Um and i've been with the basement since like what season one i've been here for a long time um so my question i guess it is i have trouble staying disciplined at times um my thought process a lot of time is was well, it's, it's more like a subconscious thing um my family has a history of surviving mm. rather than thriving mm. and i feel like a lot of times god encourages me to believe for me to thrive and a lot but a lot of times the blessings that have come from god is like enough to get by we talk about like the mountaintops i feel like a lot of times my life has been a consistency of valleys and plateaus and so it's hard to stay consistent when it feels like that mountaintop is impossible because i don't see it in my past in my family's past um so I guess the question I have for you guys, again, Uncle Tim or any of you can really answer, is like, do you have any experiences of, of, of that? And how did you, like, get through that? You know, because clearly we're through it now. We have the B-Side app. We have um, this great community that um, we're building. We have, um, yeah, it's just, I know Uncle Tim, based on your story, I've heard your story a thousand times. Um, can you talk about that? those times where it's like you had next to nothing, God's keeping you afloat, um, and just what kept you, how you kept, you know, going despite, um, you know, those valley seasons? Yes, sir. Donovan, I love you, bro. This is a great question to end on, too. So so here's how I want to approach this. I could talk about the 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 mentality shift and all that kind of stuff but but as i was listening to you i felt like the holy spirit kind of honed in on something bro you you need to you need you need a you need a different circle to be in you need to be a circle where you are the dumbest dude in the room right the most ignorant and i know that sounds harsh but let me explain you need to be in an environment where where you're growing at a different level and you're thinking at a different level, and and you're just gonna have to put yourself in those environments. You'll be able to find them. Um, uh, I, I don't know what you have access to, but whether that's through podcasts, whether that's through uh, your church, whether that's through joining an organization or whatever, th there is literally a different mindset that an approach that you have to get around in order to start thinking on a different level. Like there is absolutely no way you can stay in the family unit you're in and get this other level of thinking. You're just going to have to change your circle. So so let me give you a perfect example, uh, real time, okay? Today is December 11th, 2023. On this day last year, December 11th of 2022, I was still a lead pastor of the church. I had no idea what a deck was. I thought a deck was a patio. I had no idea what it I I, I kind of knew about investments and, and 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 what capital investments were and venture capitalism. I didn't know I don't I don't know it like I know it now. I could not tell you what subscriptions were and conversion rates were and usage rates were and I, I couldn't talk to you about tech space and I couldn't talk to you about entrepreneurship. I couldn't talk to you about LLCs. I couldn't talk to you about uh, 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 series A of funding, series B of funding, 
Series C of funding. All this stuff that I'm telling you right now is because I got in rooms with people where I was the dumbest person in the room. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I didn't know what I was being asked. I didn't even know the answers to it. I had to just sit down, shut up, and take notes. Mm. I was Googling. I would be in meetings, and they would make a statement. I'm not, the, I'm not shy, so I don't act like I've been there before when I haven't been there before. I would ask, hey, can you tell me what that was? I don't know what this acronym was. Somebody said KPI once. I'm like, hey, bro, I don't know what a KPI is. They had to tell me what a KPI was. Then I Googled it, and then I came home to research it more so I know the next time I go into that room, I know what that is. So you 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 gotta you gotta you gotta put your ego to the side. You gotta put your pride to the side. And the way you go from plateaus to actually like growth spurts is you put yourself in a room where you know nothing. Here's where I want to be. Here's where I want to go. These people know how to go there. These are my tour guides. I'm putting myself in that room, and I'm not coming out till I understand what y'all said. Mm. That's what you need. You, you know it ain't coming from your family. Mm. The success I'm having at this season of my life, there's no lead pastor I could call that was going to prepare me for this. <laughs> so I had to put myself in rooms with businessmen. I had to put myself in rooms with tech people. I had to fly to different cities to see, okay, what are y'all talking about over here? And again, you ain't got to fly. It's in your hands, man. Right. Your next mountaintop is in your hand. Woo. You are 10 hours worth of somebody's podcast away from knowing how to deal with your next season. I promise you you are. And it probably ain't this one. Cuz I got to answer too many other questions, but you might be in there, you might need a you might need to listen to a real estate podcast. I don't know what you're trying to get to. You might need to listen to a tech podcast. You might need to listen to an investor podcast. You might need to listen to an entrepreneur's podcast, but whatever it takes, bro, it's in your hand. You 10, 20 hours away from knowing something new. And all you got to, and that's where the discipline comes in. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because that's what you mentioned at first. Woo. The discipline is a subconscious thing. Everybody in your family is probably procrastinators. Everybody in your family probably starts something and, that they don't finish. But if you're going to start something and finish it, mm. Mm -mm. it's going to be because you change the way you think. Mm -mm. This is what we talked about in Romans chapter number 12, verse number 2. So, that's where I am. Is that 11, is that 106? 106, boss. 106 in Park? For Christ. 106 in Parks for Jesus. Woo! All right. Uh, I love y'all. I love y'all a lot. And uh, thank you for today. Yeah, he got it in there. Yef0826. Yeah, get, get, y'all bless him and his and his future wife. It's gonna be a party this weekend. It's gonna be a party this weekend. Hopefully, they can buy some filet mignon. Amen. On us. Woo. All right, so um, yeah, one hundred one hundred six apart was a good show. That was a good show. Um. Uh, Nathan said, "What are you getting for lunch, though?" Did Huli ask? Huli asked like at 7 a.m. this 7.38 this morning. Plain and I had an answer at 7 something this morning. Amen. So she ain't waiting on me this time. Being Mimi, I wish we had a cash app in in Canada. I wish y'all did too. Somebody's asking me, will I be at Passion 2024? I don't nobody's invited me. <coughs> nobody's invited me. If 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 that's Louis Giglio, I love Louis, and they have a great thing going. I don't do many conferences anymore, and I don't do I don't preach at many churches. Uh, uh, there's only like literally, like a handful of churches that I preach at. I just my assignment's different. Highways, byways, bushes, and shrubs. I can't be at the wedding banquet every day, right? Or every weekend. I gotta. I'm shaking trees. I'm jumping behind bushes. What y'all doing back here? Uh, TO10, before it ends, I need to I need to know where to get a Bible like yours. You need to know? This is an NLT study Bible, homie. New Living Translation study Bible, four and a half pounds. When I tell you it's got notes on notes on notes on notes on notes, cross-reference on cross-reference on cross-reference. So, yeah, I'm going to go to Passion 2024. 
All right, I love y'all so much. Much love from Cameroon. I love y'all, Georgia. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, all right, y'all. I hate I hate leaving. It's always heartbreaking, huh? It is. God, I love y'all so much. Okay, until next time. Peace. Press B with me, and let's let whatever gon' be just be. Uh, yeah. So press B with me, and let's let whatever gon' be just be.